Good afternoon everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop. So a couple videos back I did a, a review on my CNC machine around lessons learned. And among all the moaning and complaining of things that I wish I'd have done a little differently, one of the ones was I mentioned I, I didn't like how the whole water cooling thing was done, you know, and the, this and the hoses and the bucket down here on the floor. I just didn't like any of that. So someone suggested that I look into making a closed loop system that all rode directly on the carriage right here in this big open spot and use a radiator and some fans like they use for water cooling computers. And I thought that was an awesome idea. So check out what we're going to do today. So I put the idea into motion. First thing I did was went out onto Flea Bay and started looking at water cooled computer systems. And there were some that were closed loop deals, the coolant was already in them, things like that. They were all fairly pricey. And then I ran across this and all this is is just a small radiator. It's designed to hold three fans on it and you can add whatever components you want to it. So I started with this as the base as the primary part and moved on. Then I found this little job which is a water reservoir and a pump below it and my of course my ins and outs 12 volt power. So I had that going. Some mounting parts. I went by my surplus electronics place and picked up a couple more fans. I had one now I've got three so I'm going to use these like this. In addition, because I wanted to know what was going on, um, I picked up this little set, which is a, a flow meter. It's just a piece of acrylic. It's hard to see. The water goes in and out and spins the, the little gauge, and so it's just a visual indicator that water is flowing, as well as a temperature sensor. So this probe goes into the water flow and I get a readout. All of this 12 volts. The price on this, not a whole lot. I won't misquote it here. Check down in the video comments. Um, I'll have put the actual price down there. So with all those components, there's a ton of space right here. So I'm basically I'm going to mount the radiator here. All these hoses go away fans on it, and then there'll be enough room for the reservoir and pump here. The only thing I needed was a better way to hold this. So I took the program that I have, the, the CAD drawing for these braces, and modified it. And now I have a pair of black ones. One for the other side. This side has got a hole in it for the flow meter and for the temperature sensor. And then the radiator, I'll use angle brackets and mount between them like such. I thought this piece would look pretty cool out of this black rigid PVC and then after I got it cut I realized this might not have been such a good idea because the strength here you can probably just about see me flexing it. I'm, I'm losing some strength here. The bulk of my strength is in this triangle and, and it'll be plenty there but uh, this little bit down here doesn't hurt. So. You know, worst case scenario is I have to cut this out of, uh, out of plywood or Baltic birch again. I'm going to mount these three computer fans across the back. I'm going to set them up in a pusher configuration. These holes here that were brutally punched into this real thin tin appear to be threaded in uh, 440 thread. So I've got some uh, small 440 socket head cap screws. We're going to attach it right here. I'm adding some brackets to the other side and the way I'm mounting these albeit kind of temporary in an, a, with the desire of reducing the, insult, the vibration I'm using a 440 flathead screw through a grommet that I've sliced in half so that's only half a grommet then through the bracket and another grommet on the other side leaving us just enough threads to hold on this is going to be fairly temporary with these aluminum brackets. When the machine is running again, 
I'm going to cut an acrylic plate that'll span the whole back side. Well, let's take this over and see if we're getting closer. That's the basic gist of what we're going to do. I'm going to keep it held up off the bottom for cable clearance. So we're going to put some holes in the sides and bolt this thing in. I think the biggest trick is going to be connecting all the hoses while this is going in uh, and not ripping out all the grommets. But here's to try. Well, some time has gone by, a couple of weeks in fact. Uh, I didn't shoot any video last weekend, and I was only out here in the shop long enough just to get the radiator mounted, um, which I had mounted once already, but I plugged in the pump, and it ran for about five seconds and died. So I had to wait for a whole new pump setup to arrive, which is very similar, a little bit smaller in reservoir size. So at this point, I believe I'm down to wiring it so that it works off the relays in the control box. The reservation I have to that is that right now, the way this is set up, the radiator here is going to be a big bubble. The fill and return is down here at the bottom and I'm going to have to be able to push all the air out of it and back down and out of the system, which is not going to be a trivial task. So I've, I've only come up with two options. One option would be to drill a hole in the top of the tank and then have some sort of a, a plug for it. It's a real thin metal and I'm not confident I'd find something that would create a good seal under pressure, much less not wear out uh, you know, threading or possibly strip them out. The other option is I take the radiator and I flip it over 180 degrees and put the tubes at the top. And I think that's what I'm gonna wind up doing Here's the new pump and reservoir setup. You can see it's a little bit smaller than the other one, configured a little bit differently. I think we're back in business. I added a T connector up here with a cap on it, and this is where I'll vent my air or inject the water just to start filling it. I want to make this run and see how it does for a while before I get any more carried away with tidying up, besides a couple of wire ties that I won't be able to help myself. I've put some water in it and gave it a little bit of a test run. This is the last thing I have to figure out, and that is how best to get the air out of the system. What I'm doing now is I've got the cap off the top of the reservoir, and I'm just adding water here. And I believe I can run it with this cap off, because there's no pressure on, let's see the camera. Yes, I should be able to run it with a cap off of the reservoir. Yeah, that's giving me what I want. It's pushing the bubbles out into the reservoir. And all I have to do is keep the reservoir full. Okay, let's finally wrap this up. I got her all completed. And look, no overhead hoses, no cables, no strings, nothing attached. From the operator side, you can see the fan on the top a couple. They're actually very quiet. We'll run them here a second. The fans are very quiet. I was afraid they'd be noisy above all the other fans that run, but they're not. They're very quiet. From this side, you can see the back of the meter and then this tube running down into the little flow, visual flow indicator. And back down in here, wherever that is, back down in here, that's the reservoir for the water. To fill the system, you have to start the pump running, and then you can take the screw off the top of the reservoir and fill it with fluid. The water in the system starts with water I've taken from our RO system, our reverse osmosis system in the house, 
and then uh, silver is added to it through a process that my wife does and you wind up with a silver infused water called colloidal silver. The silver being a natural antibacterial helps keep the water from growing nasty stuff. They also make little uh, shavings of silver that you can add and I could put directly into the reservoir if I wanted. So here's what it looks like when it's running. You can see the little visual indicator spinning and the temperature gauges come on. I'm currently displaying this in Fahrenheit um, but there's a jumper on the back that allows you to do Celsius if you're more familiar with that. The flow indicator is on the output side of the spindle directly so out of the spindle directly through the flow indicator and the flow indicator is also where the temperature sensor is screwed in so it's as close to being on the spindle as I can get to read temperature. There you can see the fans running. Most of what you hear are the fans on the control tower. I, I doubt you can even hear those little fans there. The other fan that's running is on the uh, spindle drive and it's noisy. It's got just a little bit of air coming out of here. I can just hear it in here now. Not bad at all. So at this point we've finished construction, but I haven't tested it yet. By the time I'm done editing this video I will have had an opportunity to run it and see how the spindle behaves and see how it does at keeping things cool. So read the video description below. I will put some comments in there regarding how it's behaving and how it seems to be doing, but I'm real confident this is going to work great. To the person who made this suggestion in uh, a comment on my other video, thanks again. I think this is going to be awesome. It looks great. I think it's going to perform just as well. So that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop. We'll see you next time. You're a good boy.